What's going on folks in here at Tool Dino Works? I am finally back on the dyno with our Transalp today. Actually, I've been on the dyno with our Transalp like every day for the last month. But anyway, that's besides the point. I'm back on the dyno today and finally able to share some solid intake modification results with you guys. And it's taken me a while because honestly the intake mods in these bikes are, well, they're kind of fucking stupid. So just like every new model that we buy here at Tool Dyno Works for ECU mapping R&D, we took a pretty hard look at the intake on this bike. And there's a lot going on in there. There is parts of the bodywork that integrate with the airbox inlet. There's some pretty big snorkels, some pretty aggressive bends going into the airbox as well that feed it. And all that type of stuff generally poses a restriction on these bikes. So we went ahead and started chopping stuff off, just to decide to see what happens. So for starters, we kind of just went for the low hanging fruit and decided to modify the snorkels going into the airbox itself. So these snorkels on the inside of the Transalp look like this. If you remove the air filter, you're looking at these two guys right here. And generally when you have a snorkel going into an air box like this, that is not a Ram Air style box, you're talking about introducing a bend into the intake where ultimately the inlet pulses and the airflow is going to slow down while it turns say this 90 degree corner here. So we're gonna see what effect it has on removing these in terms of performance on the bike. What we're actually gonna do is just cut these flush against the side of the airbox here. You can't remove them entirely like many other bikes because these snorkels actually do attach to the ducts on the side there. So you do need those in place. So we're just gonna take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and trim around the edge there to cut them flush and we'll see what happens. And here it is now that we've modified them and cut them flush with the side of the airbox. I'm just filming this real quick so you can see what they look like when we're done. Yes, there is a third snorkel down here at the bottom, but it's actually a much less severe bend angle than the other two where you had a 90 degree coming in and then another like 45 coming up. This is really just like a 45 degree angle going straight down. And that one, I'm not gonna bother modifying. We removed enough material from these two that actually taking up space inside the unfiltered portion of the airbox, And that's really where the restriction is likely going to lie. Modifying this guy or cutting the snorkel on the outside of the airbox is ultimately just going to make it easier for dust and debris to get straight up in there from the wheel between the radiator and the bodywork. And it's just not likely going to be worth doing. Now, we got the bike obviously back on the dyno after we performed that modification. And while it's rare, it does happen every once in a while, I was completely fucking wrong. Now, just to recap, the last time that we showed you guys this bike, it was pretty much exactly how it is right here. Yoshimura muffler installed, Acro header in place, there's a K&N air filter inside the airbox, and our custom tuning. And it made just under 89 horsepower to the tire and about 55 pound-feet of torque on pump gas. And now that we've modified the snorkels in the airbox, it still makes just under 89 horsepower and 55 pounds of torque on pump gas. Literally nothing changed anywhere in the power curve. So having just hacked up about 60 bucks worth of OEM Honda snorkels for this airbox, we decided to say, well, that's clearly not what the restriction is. So let's try something else. And underneath these panels here on either side of the bike, the airbox essentially is fed by some little swirly ducts inside the bodywork. And that modification of the inlet on the plastics looks like this. You can see here where we've removed quite a bit of material to try to free up the airflow into the airbox from the actual bodywork side, I should say, of the bike. You can see here on this side that we haven't modified yet that there's still just kind of that swirling effect in there. This is probably to create some kind of pseudo ram air effect, but truly this is not a properly sealed box. You're ever going to have any kind of ram air effect. And ram air only occurs on most modern motorcycles over like 120 miles an hour, which you're just never going to be doing on a Transalp. So we're going to go ahead and modify this one as well, get both these back on the bike and see what improvement they make. And I'm honestly not even going to bother showing you a dyno graph because it's depressing. It actually made things worse by like half a horsepower in some spots, but effectively still did absolutely nothing. So now we've modified like, I don't know, $140 worth of Honda OEM parts and gotten zero additional performance, which is not usually the way that things go here for us, honestly, when it comes to intake testing. So we decided to go for broke. I had one of our technicians go ahead and yank the airbox off the bike entirely and turn it into Swiss cheese. And this is what it looks like now that we're done literally drilling a bunch of holes in it. We've actually turned this thing into Swiss cheese. So if the box itself is a restriction to the intake in any way, shape, or form, this will eliminate that intake restriction and at least show us some sort of improvement. I'm half suspecting now, since we've done our other testing, that we're not actually going to see an improvement and that this airbox truly is not a restriction on these bikes, but we're about to find out one way or the other here in just a moment. Not only was drilling a bunch of holes in the airbox kind of fun, it actually ended up being 
an enormous improvement. We did lose just a little bit of intake velocity right down here at like 3,500 RPMs, but after 4,000, the torque improvements almost throughout the entire RPM range and horsepower improvements are substantial. There's no way around saying that. That modification fucking worked. In fact, once we got the fuel mapping properly dialed in for the additional airflow through the engine, we did pick up three foot-pounds of torque almost throughout the entire meat of the RPM range, there from about 5,000 RPM, so about 7,500. And in that same window, we picked up about four horsepower pretty much everywhere. Power doesn't really equalize till the very top end, and even there, we still gained like another horsepower. And honestly, I'm not super stoked that that modification worked, because going to that level is a little silly for most people. You shouldn't have to drill a bunch of holes in the airbox to get the thing to flow properly. So I'm really hoping that somebody actually manufactures a much better flowing airbox that physically just has a larger opening in the box itself to allow more into the filtered side of the intake. Because again, all those holes we drill are on the dirty side, so it's not like you're going to get unfiltered air in there, but it does open up the airbox to getting water and dirt and debris and stuff like that onto the filter, and it's probably going to make the filter life dramatically lower than it would be otherwise. But until somebody makes a box, this is about as good as you can get when it comes to modifying these intakes. We tried the very simple stuff, again the low-hanging fruit that normally works on many other modern motorcycles, and it just didn't on this thing. So, if you're looking to add a little more performance on the intake side of the thing, well, we've got you covered here at Tool Dynaworks, because obviously we've had to build custom fuel mapping for this modification, and truly, it is a pretty significant improvement right through the mid-range where you're normally riding the bike, so I bet there's quite a few people that actually go ahead and perform this modification before they send us their ECU. I also couldn't tell that it added really any additional noise whatsoever. Again, everything is pretty shrouded by the actual bodywork itself, so it's not like induction noise has increased at all. So it really is kind of just free horsepower if you're going to do it before you send us the ECU to get properly tuned and dialed in for whatever you've done to the exhaust side of the bike. And the other thing to consider when you're doing these modifications is to look at things a little more holistically. What is something like a giant airbox mod and an aftermarket exhaust system and our custom ECU mapping going to give you when you already have one of these bikes? And the answer is pretty much completely new motorcycle. There is more than 25% more torque right off the bottom at 3,500 RPMs and more than 25% more power at 9,500 RPMs where the bike started to just fall off a cliff with the stock ECU mapping in place. There is almost no modern motorcycle in production currently that I can truly say you gain 25% more torque off the bottom and 25% more horsepower off the top with just intake exhaust and tuning modifications. That's an unbelievable improvement in performance on one of these bikes. As I've said in all the other videos, our custom ECU mapping completely transforms the performance of the bike. It will run smoother, stronger, and cooler than it ever has before. You then have four distinct, true different power modes on the thing. They actually feel very different from one another now, so you can actually select and tailor the power delivery to your specific wants and needs. But the one thing I have added recently that I haven't talked about in the previous videos is the cooling fan parameters. Because the cooling fans on this bike did not come on till 102 degrees Celsius, which is hot. But thanks to some back and forth with our friends over at Woolwich Racing, we were actually able to define the cooling fan parameters in this bike. So now the cooling fans will come on down at 95 degrees Celsius and shut off at 90, which will overall just keep the coolant temperatures much, much lower on these bikes for those of you that are often riding them in much warmer climates. Now, these bikes do seem to have about 175 degree mechanical thermostat, so going lower than that wouldn't really make sense. So 95 and 90 is about where I'm going to leave these fan parameters. And honestly, that's about the optimal point for most modern liquid cooled motorcycle engines anyway. You want them right around 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit for just an optimal burn and maximum engine longevity. We've also done some other stuff off camera that I truly just didn't have the time to film. We went ahead and put the stock muffler back on to our Acra headers because actually more than one customer emailed us saying, hey, I didn't have a crash guard or skid plate on the bike. I was doing something a little silly on it. I obliterated the stock headers. Now I have aftermarket headers, but the stock muffler, do you have mapping for me? And the answer is yes. We took the time to actually go ahead and build that combination just because, again, there was more than one person that asked, so we decided to just do it. It's really easy to swap out the exhaust systems on these bikes, and it truly doesn't take me that long to tweak the fuel mapping now that we've got everything built. Just when I roll it up here on the dyno, it's maybe 30 minutes worth of work. So if there is any other kind of one-off or weird, weird combinations for exhaust systems out there, don't hesitate to email us and just ask, hey, have you done anything with this setup? Have you seen this setup? Can you do this setup? The answer is probably either... Yes, or yeah, sure, I'll do that. Just give me like a day or two. So as always, if you have any questions whatsoever about getting your trans out properly tuned and dialed in, because again, there is a lot to uncork here with proper tuning and intake and exhaust work, do not hesitate to email us at support.tooldownworks.com because we are always happy to help.